Love by James Russell Lowell True love is but a humble lowborn thing, and hath its food served up in earthenware. It is a thing to walk with, hand in hand, through the everydayness of this workday world, bearing its tender feet to every roughness, yet letting not one heart be go astray. From beauty's law of plainness and content, a simple fireside thing, whose quiet smile can warm earth's poorest hovel to a home, which, when our autumn cometh, as it must, and life in the chill wind shivers bare and leafless, shall still be blessed with Indian summer youth, in bleak November, and with a thankful heart smile on its ample stores of garnered fruit, as full of sunshine to our aged eyes, as when it nursed the blossoms of our spring. Such is true love, which steals into the heart with feet as silent as the lightsome dawn, that kisses smooth the rough brows of the dark, and hath its will through blissful gentleness, not like a rocket, which with savage glare whirs suddenly up, then bursts, and leaves the night painfully quivering on the dazed eyes. A love that gives and takes, that seeth faults, not with flaw-seeking eyes like needle points, but loving kindly, ever looks them down with the o'ercoming faith of meek forgiveness. A love that shall be new and fresh each hour, as is the golden mystery of sunset, or the sweet coming of the evening star, alike and yet most unlike every day, and seeming ever best and fairest now, a love that doth not kneel for what it seeks, but faces truth and beauty as their peer, showing its worthiness of noble thoughts by a clear sense of inward nobleness, a love that in its object findeth not all grace and beauty, and enough to sate its thirst of blessing. But, in all of good found there, it sees but heaven-granted types of good and beauty in the soul of man, and traces, in the simplest heart that beats, a family likeness to its chosen one, that claims of it the rights of brotherhood. For love is blind but with the fleshly eye, that so its inner sight may be more clear, and outward shows of beauty only so are needful at the first, as is a hand to guide and to uphold an infant's steps. Great spirits need them not. Their earnest look pierces the body's mask of thin disguise, and beauty ever is to them revealed behind the unshapeliest, meanest lump of clay, with arms outstretched and eager face ablaze, yearning to be but understood and loved.